At the same time, and unfortunately, the business of medicine uh, knocked on my door day two. And we'll do this on a no-names basis. Um, but the business of medicine came knocking on the door. I was still in a Berkeley hospital. Uh, I went from emergency room to intensive care. I was stable, but um, they put me in intensive care. Stabilizing, learning, feeling a little better. The local doctor came in and brought their team from Walnut Creek and said, I'm transferring you to my clinic in Walnut Creek. I said, what are you going to do? He says, well, here's my team. We'll walk you through this. I'm transferring you to Walnut Creek, and we'll take care of you. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, we're going to walk through this thing. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to make the most informed choice as to where I should go. This is my life, not yours. And the doctor and team was insistent that, no, 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 we got this covered. We know what we're doing, and uh, we got to get you out of Berkeley into our cancer clinic in Walnut Creek. I refused. Um, um, uh, I was going to Stanford or Hopkins uh, in, all my, in my study, and it was very clear that this team was grabbing on to the business of medicine. And uh, I'm not a weak individual, so I, you know, at some level I was a little threatened and I refused. So you got to be alert, you got to be in control, right? Uh, you can't be threatened by the system around you. Um, but there is a side of business of medicine that can have an ugly underbelly, and it, it presented itself very, very early to me, um, if you will. Um, I assembled a team of experts. Uh, I checked into Stanford. Uh, there are two AML experts that I really like in the world. I'll talk about them a little later. One of them's at uh, Stanford. Brought my team together. Um, they kind of laughed at me a little bit, but it was kind of fun. Uh, in my room at Stanford, I set up an office. <laughs> I moved in a table, I brought a computer screen down, um, I brought a printer, a scanner, and uh, one of my centering forces is you, is open text. And I decided that I was gonna center, around, uh, uh, center myself on what I love, my family, my work, and um, uh, I got to know kind of the, uh, the folks at Stanford real well, real fast. Uh, built a game plan, kicked off a series of, of tests, um, uh, but there was a little humor here where um, I literally brought in a folding table, uh, brought down a big computer screen, printer, cables, uh, and I literally just set up office next to my hos uh, hospital bed um, as, a, as I was going to take my, my treatment. And uh, I jumped right into treatment. Day four from the diagnosis, I was, I was going into treatment. And at this point, given, given what we knew, about my presenting conditions, and given the disease, I faced a 50% chance of death in five years. Or said differently, I had a 50% chance of living. I had 50-50 odds that we're gonna make it or not. And um, um, they were good enough odds, obviously, to keep going. Any odd is good enough to keep going. Um, just as an aside, um, I um, post it to my door because it helped focus to me, um, a poem. And I posted it to my door, and everyone who came into my room had to read that poem. And I'll only read the last stanza of that poem. It's Invictus by William Henley. And for those who know me, and though I write um, prose, I'm actually a more lover of verse, if you will, in life. And it matters not how straight the gate, how charged the punishments, the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And um, it was really at this moment at Stanford, printed it out, taped it to my door, uh, inside and out, everyone had to read it. And um, it was really at that moment I found my inner strength that this was going to be a fight. It was going to be a fight like I've never had in my life. And everything I could do from visual reminders um, to, to friends, um, to other connections, it was going to be very helpful to go on this journey. And um, Stanford was building a new wing at, at the same time and um, had set up a, an iron beam there, that white beam, uh, and it was kind of funny. So I unplugged myself, um, um, you know, given AML, and once you start treatment, you lose your immune system. So you have to breathe through what's called a, um, a 90 mask, and you can see it kind of 
Uh, that's the 90 mask that I'm wearing. Uh, you know, dust, fungus, other things could kill you once you lose your immune system. So if you're not in a controlled environment, um, you get out of that controlled environment, you have to breathe through a, uh, what's called a, a 90 protector mask. Um, so I plugged myself, put my mask on, walked outside, and I wrote the poem on the beam. And the beam's now in the building forever. So it was uh, just a fun, fun, nice thing to do. Um, went through the steps of kind of learning how to uh, fight AML. And, um, you know, there are basically five, if you, do the, if you do the entire process, it's five steps. Induction, consolidation, transplant, recovery, and then eternal vigilance. And if you don't make it through one of the steps, um, you, just, you just do your best, right, to kind of live through, through those uh, cycles of each of the steps. But you, you needed to know the enemy, and there was no handbook for this. And that was one of the things that um, was really startling to me um, about um, um, this disease, and there are about 10,000 cases per year of this particular disease, that there's not a handbook, right, that you can go to. And so you really had to go through a lot of self-learning and a lot of self-study of what it all means. And it is highly complex. I'm an engineer. I'm looking for a Gantt chart. I'm looking for the yes-no gate, right? If this happens, what do I do? If not, what do I do, right? Okay, we, we go to, you know, go to, you kind of come back to, to this step. And my brain had to work differently in, in quite a bit of unknowns um, uh, to kind of walk through all these gates. But I never stopped learning, and I encourage you that when you face that challenge, personal or professional, you know, those lessons of gathering experts, finding your, your, your inner strength, um, learning your problem at an atomic level. Now, I've always kind of believed on the professional side, and my team can attest to this, that I encourage, I encourage executives, pick one or two projects, whatever they are, and learn them at the atomic level. And it's not micromanagement, right? Pick, you know, pick, um, uh, you know, pick an HR problem, right? Or, uh, you know, how to, how to take digital, um, in the, uh, how to take HR and leverage digital tools and learn it to the atomic level as a leader. Um, so as leaders, encourage, you know, encourage ourselves to pick one or two topics every year and go learn them at the atomic level. Be smarter than the people who work for you on one or two topics. And just keep repeating that over and over and over again. I think it builds stronger teams. I think it builds stronger executives to pick that one or two topic and go learn them at an atomic level. Um, um, I think the team appreciates it. It's not micromanagement. You build bonds and you build a better business as well. Um, I will write a book on AML and I'll publish the handbook one day. We kicked off a battery of tests. And that's my blood right there. This was one morning. Um, stuck the needle in and uh, took out 21 tubes. And um, off we went. We did DNA tests, RNA tests, chromosomal tests, genetic tests, cellular tests, and molecular tests um, to kind of learn everything we could about kind of the path and journey, this unknown journey that was going to be, be in front of us. And we immediately went into round one of chemo. And um, um, we did 10 injections of high-dose ARC and um, idarubicin, and it failed. So induction, right, that induction, consolidation, um, transplant, recovery, uh, uh, eternal vigilance, that first box failed. We did it again, round two, and it failed. I failed induction. We could not control the disease in that first box. And we went to the protocol that is state of the art, um, which are these two drugs, these two chemotherapies, and it did not work. And at that point, those blood tests came back. And um, I like saying whiskey, tomahawk, foxtrot, or in the vernacular, WTF. And it became clear why we couldn't solve the disease. First, um, which I knew coming in, were what's called presenting conditions. Um, um, that by the time I got into treatment, 
my presenting conditions were off the chart. 330,000 white blood cells, just off the chart. Most leukemia patients kind of come in with white blood cells around uh, uh, 20,000 or 30,000. I came in 10 times, 10 times worse. It was that adrenaline, right? That, that adrenaline that drives me. That, um, and it's the acuteness, it comes on very fast, married with that adrenaline, right? Got me there probably two or three months a little too late. Second thing that happened is this disease wants to win. And it mutated inside my body. The first time chemo hit it, it mutated. And the mutation created something called a FLT3 in tandem duplication, that's the ITD. And what FLT3 does, right, no one wants cancer, no one wants leukemia, you certainly don't want AML, and when you have AML, you don't want FLT3. And what happened with FLT3, this mutation, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. It's the accelerant to the blast. So um, we had a mutation that basically now says, regardless what you throw at me, I'm gonna accelerate the growth. I had a second mutation, and it's a very rare mutation. It's called a 6-9 translocator. It was either the first time or the second time chemo hit me. Um, um, the leukemia cell said, I'm smarter than this. Mutated chromosome. It swapped the 6, nine chromo six and 9 chromosome in my body. That was a translocation. And I became immune to chemo. Today, I stand here immune to chemotherapy. No matter what chemo you put in me, it will not work. And it's called a 6-9 trans, a tra a translocator. And um, at the same time, my immune system is now at zero because I've been through all these rounds of chemo.